start. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to this introduction to Flutter, um, Flutter Plus, or whatever we call it. So today we'll be talking about Flutter, and we have a little UI. We are going to um, we're going to code it from scratch using Flutter, and in the procedure we're going to talk about Flutter tips and some Flutter concepts. So um, Flutter is a Google uh, Google UI toolkit. It's a Google app. It's uh, it's a framework you can use to build mobile apps, frameworks, and websites. Like you can use it to build uh, both Android, iOS, uh, Linux, even Linux desktop applications, Windows desktop applications, and it's one of a kind. Like it's just one time code. Unlike most um, Part of the let's visit the Flutter. Let's visit Flutter. The unlike most uh, uh, um, other UI languages, UI languages are things can use design interfaces. Unlike mm -hmm. most of them, where uh, you can have separate um, separate UI separate languages, like maybe. Uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in the case of web front end for making front end web apps, or in the case of Android Native, where you have XML and Java Kotlin. Plotter is entirely written in that. I don't know if you can see my screen, but you see this is the landing page of Flutter. So it says design beautiful apps, fast development. Coding in Flutter is very fast, right? And unlike React Native or Ionic order cross platform uh, solutions that kind of um, have uh, JavaScript with Flutter goes straight to the point to compile it natively per platform. We're going to have to see what it takes like, what it looks like to do. Uh, the, even the Flutter the dev landing has an example. I think you can run these UIs and uh, something like that. And the work, the, uh, yes. So, so about Flutter. Uh, everything in Flutter is a widget. Widget, the word widget stands for maybe what a component is in Angular or what an element is in HTML or what um, a view is in Android Native. Widgets are basically just, um, everything in Flutter is a widget. From the text on the screen to the bottom of the screen to whatever thing it is we are gonna do or we are gonna use is a widget. And in Flutter, there are two types of widgets. So there are stateful widgets and stateless widgets. So state is something. State is like the content of your data. In uh, state is like the content of your data. So uh, it could be a number that is continuously being incremented on screen. Like as you can see with this, uh, you have clicked this button how many times. Uh, 52 times, you're seeing the demo on the landing page, something like that. It could be a, the states could be maybe personal preferences like theme choices. The states could be uh, uh, the task items on a to-do list app like we'll be doing today. Whatever I think it is that there are two types of widgets on Flutter, generally two types. It could be stateless or stateless or stateful. So stateful widgets will have states somewhere like somewhere, why, states, why stateless widgets don't have states, right? Now, every widget has a very important method called the build method. Build, uh, if you look at the snippet on the screen, see widgets build context, the build method, every widget has it. And inside the build method, we turn another widget. As a matter of fact, a Flutter app is a tree of components. It's a tree of widgets like, it's a continuous like one wife and that child or children. The children keep having more child widgets, more children widgets until you get to the terminal branch. That's just what it looks like. So to recap what we've said so far, we said Flutter is a beautiful um, framework or it's a tool you can use to create mobile applications, web applications or desktop applications or Linux apps. And um, it's the same all true. It comes preloaded with so many widgets or components for you to use. So the coding is less. Is only one programming language called that, which is best suited for the language for its many features, and um, many features, and that makes it easy. 
and it's close to English, and you don't really have to stress a lot. And it's just one language, unlike other programming language, uh, other UI toolkits, maybe like uh, web or Android, where that's more than one programming language you use. And Flutter 2, everything is widget, and you have stateful and stateless widgets. So maybe at this point, I could ask for questions before we go into the demo we have for today. But if you want to see the stateful and stateless widgets and the, um, the fact that you have a build method, a build, something that's just a build where you return uh, the child widgets. And you can have more build methods and more build like keep in each widget and keep returning a widget. That's just the secret there. So you use a stateless widget when there is no state to take care of, things that don't change. For example, uh, you put a text, like just to display text that doesn't change with a stateless widget. You want to display maybe um, a text that maybe is changing based on some particular uh, value store. It has to be stateful widget, that kind of thing, because at every time it has to be changed or repented on screen, it has to bring the new value. So it has to take into account state. So with all that mentioned, I want to ask everybody, do we have any, um, have any questions so far? You can unmute your mic and speak. Uh, um, yes. My question is based on this. Which one is Flutter? Which one is that? Okay, that's a very important question. So while we all need, let me open a new tab. Uh, control two, that dot there. So this is that. Uh, that that is a programming language, right? Uh, that was created, I think, around 2010. Um, and it was kind of, it took many features from different programming languages. This is the landing page of that. If you scroll, uh, supported by Google, that is open source. It's a, that is a bit from Flutter. I like the question you asked. But then that can do a lot of things. Without Flutter, that still tries to understand. So there's even this that part. You can try that in your browser. Uh, if you run this code, it's going to bring out some results at this point. And I think there's that part too. I'm to see that part. So in that part, you can run that code online. So hello, one, two, three, four, five. That is similar to most languages you're used to, be them JavaScript or whatever thing it is, right? So uh, yeah, that's for that. Then for uh, so you can run that code directly in the browser with that part. You can download the that SDK. So that is a programming language, whereas Flutter is a framework built on that, right? Flutter is a framework built on that. If you click this now, so the Flutter framework is simply made up of that libraries. That's the way if you have PHP and Laravel, PHP is the language, but Laravel is the framework which you can use to write, or you can have um, Node.js and uh, you can have Node.js and um, maybe Express, or you can have Ang Angular and JavaScript or React and JavaScript. So JavaScript is the, uh, the core languages of these, of, of these stops, but then uh, they are Angular or React and now the frameworks on which these things are written in. So I hope I've answered that question. Who asked the question? Yes, but in, let me put it like this. Normally we advise that if you want to learn a particular language, you have to learn the core language before you can move into the framework. Let me say I want to learn Flutter, I want to learn Flutter now. Do I need to learn that before I will learn Flutter or I can just dive in into Flutter? Okay, that's a very important question too. So uh, this question, I'll answer it in context. If it's someone who has never tried programming before, and the first thing they're learning is Flutter, it does good to first of all learn that and understand programming, learn programming, understand programming. Maybe understand things like conditionals, variables, operators, object-oriented programming before jumping into Flutter, and that will be learning the that language. But if the person in question has been a programmer for you for some time, maybe like you got time and um, uh, you have something. So coming over to Flutter. You will not really spend a lot of time learning that because uh, you're already familiar with many concepts and you just need to focus a little on the syntax. And the syntax difference is as little. It's close to JavaScript, it's close to Java, it's close to many other languages you've played with. So, and um, it's object oriented and it's typed, it has types. That, that means the only difference with JavaScript because JavaScript is not typed. 
to aside that and it also has it also permits you to use non-typings like to use var var just the way you have in javascript instead of specifying a type so uh, it's it's dynamic enough even as a dynamic type in that even though it's a type static language so the answer to that question is uh, the answer to question is that whether you have to learn that following your flutter that shows the flutter depends on your background so if in this case now you're in, into programming you can deep dive straight into flutter in the procedure, you see the similarities between that and other programming languages you know, and it will serve, and it will serve like, and just like today, you might not have seen that before or interact, but as you're doing some things on screen and I'm explaining some things, I'm quite sure that you will of understanding some stuff because it's plain English, just plain, it's plain clean, it's almost like key value pairs, something like that. So yeah, uh, any other question? Uh, for me, thanks. Maybe okay. others can ask if they have. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. Any other person? If no other person, then we progress. With, if no other person, then we progress with um with the main business of today. So today we are going to um create a new Flutter uh, app. We have a, a UI already set. So uh, before that, I want to say something about uh, Flutter. So I'm skipping the whole bunch of the core theory behind the Flutter framework. I'm skipping the whole bunch of things like uh, getting started with Flutter, like uh, it's literally on, on your own, try to click on the get started button, and download Flutter for your own uh, operating system version. So your own operating system version like Windows or Windows or Linux or Chrome or, and then maybe Windows like I'm using system requirements, Windows 7 or later I'm using Windows 10, Big Space and other things like that. The download the Flutter SDK, setting it up. So I'm skipping all of that. There's a lot of online platforms to help you with that. You need Android Studio, you need Visual, you can use Visual Studio Code. I use Visual Studio Code. But one important part of, um, one important part of Flutter, I I uh, always, but it's very important to use Flutter, I use it, I'm using the command prompt. So one important part of Flutter uh, is the, I don't know if you, I think I have to share my whole screen. So permit me to switch sharing again. Mm, the whole screen this time. Good, so you can now see this uh, CMD. Uh, <laughs> One important part of Flutter is the Flutter Doctor command. Flutter Doctor. So when you have Flutter Doctor, everything should turn green. So if everything turns green, you're good to use Flutter. So by the time you've installed Flutter instead of everything, uh, Flutter Android Toolchain, Chrome Android Studio, you can go for an add Flutter Doctor dash V, that's verbos to give you the details. So once all these things are green and they are good to go, then you are okay. That's all the flutter like but if you have some red marks then something is wrong and you have to correct them so if you have, that's just the pain of setting up flutter but it's not that much it's just a, a one-time stop after that uh, the sky is the limit on how to put flutter so android studio is flutter's recommended ide but please permit me i'm going to be using um visual studio code yes code this one yeah so let's get started uh given this vs code uh should do this. So VS Code, you can install the Flutter extensions, the Dart and Flutter extensions. I have them installed. With them, you can easily create Flutter projects from VS Code directly. I just need to click Control Shift P, and then you see Flutter new projects. You see commands. You can click on Enter and enter their names. But I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to go back to my command prompt and. Do Flutter new. Maybe I should create this project on my desktop, Windows D. So uh, in my desktop, CD desktop one. Um, Flutter creates. That's a command to create a new Flutter project. And maybe you can give it a name. Let's call it to do because it's to do we are going to be doing. Flutter to do. Flutter create to do. And that's one. So give it time. Give it time. It's going to um, create all the projects and run Flutter pop get. So after running Flutter pop gets, which if you have a good internet connectivity, it's not going to take time. It's not going to take time. 
if you have a top up, get snuggling stick time, if you have a good internet and something like that. So, but before I open, okay, let me go ahead. Good, good. Uh, to do. So maybe I can open this guy. So this is the structure of a flutter app. The structure of a flutter app, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, let me open it so that it's more visible. You have the most important parts of this flutter. You see these folders, Android folder, iOS folder, web folder, test folder. In future, you can even be having Linux and Windows folders. But the most important part that you have to do with you is this main.dat file. The main.dat file is the entry point of uh, your Flutter code. Everything you're going to be doing in Flutter will be within this lib folder, this lib folder. And then another business we have is popspec.yml. So popspec.yml is another place that is like your manifest, like your manifest or manifest in Android or maybe angular.json and angular, or I don't know, some like a master file or your package.json in Node.js, a must master file where you can edit properties of the project. Yes, so in as much as you've understood that you need this pop spec and you've understood that you need uh, you need this main.dat file because you can create more dat files, right? So God's time that asked about the difference between Flutter and that, you see that the whole framework we call Flutter, is see package Flutter, but we we'll keep interacting with that files dot that so notice that the file name is that so um um so yes so let's run this let's run this sample sample uh project that they did boilerplate code that is generated um i think i should do this bring this guy here so i'll be using android emulator you can equally run it on web can clearly run it on web. So the this run button you're seeing here, line one, import package, and line two, empty, line three, void main, the entry point. Um, you see, run debug profile. So this thing was introduced by VS Codes, uh, VS Codes, Visual Studio Codes, uh, extension that and Flutter extensions. It wasn't introduced by, uh, it's not part of the code itself. If you open this code, the notepad or what other thing, you may not see these lines. So these are helpers that VS Code does. And I recommend VS Code because there is a certain option of um, hot reload on save. Yeah, I'm coming to what hot reload is. Hot reload is a feature Flutter has, which makes it which makes coding very fast. And once you change the code, it changes the UI in question, just like that. So very fast, unlike maybe refreshing the whole thing stuff, it just makes it, it refreshes it for you. So let me click on run. Yeah, I'm launching on Chrome Web JavaScript. And why it's even running with JavaScript? Why is it even running on Chrome Web JavaScript? Um, you can even launch on, uh, and also launch on, uh, what's the name, on an Android emulator. You can call it plug an external Android. I won't be plugging my external Android phone because if I do so, you will be having, uh, you, won't see my, you won't see my Android screen, so I'll have to use an emulator. So this is what the, the sample looks like on Chrome Web. Let me this screen so I can be seeing the code at the same time. So if you press this push button how many times, you see it will be updating, then 11, 12, 13, 14, stuff like that. Yes, so I can still launch back the same thing on, okay, let me start this my emulator. I've run emulator set up already. So setting up the emulator and all those things, uh, the emulator is set through Android Studio, and uh, that can have a connection in Android Visual Studio can have a connection to it. So this is the emulator here, and let me turn it on. So I can rerun this thing, given that I've changed the device to the Android emulator down here in Visual Studio Code. I can come and run in the emulator, and it's going to come up. Just give it some time. Yes. So. I just want us to go through the some boilerplate code, and then from there we can continue. We can uh, maybe focus on the to do we came to do the boilerplate code will give us more insights on um, how Flutter works exactly. And the boilerplate comes. The boilerplate code comes with a lot of comments, so the comments can explain to you uh, what's happening behind the scenes. Actually, so uh, behind the scenes, wait, let me this guy here and then here so this is it uh 
void main run up my app. So you create, there will be an entry point from the main method. And then uh, the my app is, you can name this my app anything. It can be something else to do page, whatever thing it is. You can name it anything you want to name it. But then once you're there, you, as I said, you see my app extends stateless widgets. So it's a widget and like I said, widgets are components. So you've literally created a widget and the widget now has no, uh, it doesn't keep state, so the my app widget. And its build method returns a material app. So material app is a helper app in the world of, uh, you can also have Patino app. Patino is for iOS styling, the material is for material design. So this is another good thing about Flutter because Flutter took into account, um, Flutter took into account material and put material design almost everywhere. Okay, the Android emulator is ready and has brought, okay, it has launched, so you can see it. You can see the Android uh, emulator's own app, similar to the website we have in Chrome. Right, if I open that. So you can edit the styles, make it responsive, stuff like that, but that's beyond the scope of today. So I think I can stop uh, the, the, I can stop the build from, um, from Chrome zone and we'll be using just the emulator zone. I just use the emulator, something like this. Um, so with this emulator, with this emulator, uh, yeah, what's icon I'm using? So I can change color with theme, theme data. So sorry for debating. Widgets build my app, stateless widgets, widget build, build a theme. Now, another thing is theming. So theming is a simple business in Flutter that takes care of color, let me just explain it, right? So you can be reading the comments on screen while I'm talking. Okay, let me make it a little more larger for you. So you see primary swatch, colors the blue. So if you want to make it easy, the other things can specify in your theme, many other things. So uh, like the font family, the font sizes, the primary color, the secondary color, whether the theme should be dark theme or white theme. If I come here and add a uh, brightness, brightness.dark, for example, that's it. It's a switch to a black dark theme app, just like that. So the feature that makes it automatically switch as I'm making changes on code is the hot reload feature. Normally, you may have to click on hot reload, a button here in VS Code, but uh, this uh, thunderbolt, thunderbolt button looking like something here. But then uh, I set my editor to auto or to load on file changes. So that's why it's going to be loading entirely. I can comment out this, I can comment out this uh, brightness that I added. Let's go back to bright, uh, normal white dark. And blue, I can change to say colors to red, for example. And everything switches accordingly. I can change to colors to yellow. And if you want more deeper colors, VS Code, uh, VS Code support is there with more color choices from material design specification. So almost everything you need may be there. So maybe I can go for colors.orange accent, for example, um, or colors.yellow. And we have a yellow looking stuff. The back to colors.blue, please. Uh, blue is a cool color. So we can even edit the Flutter demo homepage, but I'm not supposed to be comfortable with, let me say GDSC, DSC intro to Flutter. I just want to be comfortable with the fact that there's a auto-load feature and it's easy to understand. So there's a material app and you see this homepage, the home, the home uh, key, I don't know if you can see it, this home key, this one here for this material takes in my homepage and my homepage is defined next. And it's extending a stateful widget. A stateful widget. So just you just keep seeing stateless widget and stateful widget. And I keep seeing child features, children features. Someone is returning another person, return another person. As before, you know now you're growing the widget three. Now the stateful widget has a title, which is this GDS intro to flutter, which is what we're changing here. And then uh, this is the state object itself. So for every stateful widget, you need to create a state object over the simple reject. I know this is quite a funny uh, way of doing it, but that works, that works. Uh, so you need to create a, a, a home page, for example, uh, jet, which should represent the full page application. 
and it needs to have an accompanying state object in my home page state. Underscore, starting your applications with underscore, help to uh, mark them as private in, in that code. So Flutter inherits that. Good. So the only state here is this counter. Int counter equals to zero. And then increment counter set state. Set state is another important method in Flutter where you um, maybe when you want to indicate that, okay, the state has changed, rebuild the UI, rebuild the, the view or what's on screen based on uh, the changing of like, uh, hey, so it's a rebuild and come and increment the text values. So wait, okay, let me make this thing more visible to you. Let me increase the, you have pushed this text, headline four, maybe headline one. Good, I think it's larger now, the seven is larger now. Uh, and then maybe even the style, I can add this thing to a style. Text. Just, so we don't really focus too much. We cannot do everything on one day. I think it's more visible. You have pushed this button this many times, seven. And then if I keep pushing more, you see 12, 13, 14 is going up. So because I'm trying to visualize the fact that you're seeing these things over the internet or stuff like that. So to be sure that you're seeing the screen as I'm seeing it. Uh, yeah, I'm coming to that part of the part of the code. So the part of the code I want us to focus on now, let's go gradually, um, the build method of this, uh, my home page state. So it's returning a scaffold to so the return keyword and returning a scaffold. So scaffold is a generic uh, method. The scaffold is a generic, not method, sorry, generic widget for returning things like, like a, a container or a wrapper for your, um, app or stuff like that. And then it takes things like an app bar and then a body. It can also take a floating action button, this button here in the scaffold. Or the scaffold can take other things like bottom navigation bar, even side navigation, like you have a side nav from here or stuff like that. But let's, let's reduce our scope of what we have to see or what we have to learn to um, what we have come here to do today. So I won't do so much on the boilerplate code. Whenever you do Flutter creates, reading the comments can help you um, and help you understand what's happening. But the app bar, for example, takes a simple text widget. You can add things to the app bar, like let me see uh, the actions button. Maybe uh, you can also add things to the body. Okay, body took one widget, center. So center, uh, just instead of being, like just centralizes whatever thing you have make it take the center. Column indicates a row, a, a long list of widgets that will be aligned vertically. And you have other points. So a column takes children, you take main axis alignment, center or start or end, just like flex in CSS or where those can come from the web, web, um, web, 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 uh, web, website, those who are used to web, something like that. So you can change to end or start and or center or axis alignment and so on and so forth. So I think we've dropped enough on the boilerplate code. So we're going to, we this was our to do, right? So we're going to clear everything. Before clearing everything, I'm going to show you the, the I'm going to show you the uh, boilerplate code we had. The, the, the boilerplate UI we prepared for today, the UI we're going to use to learn for that today. So just give me a break. Um, so yes, let's get the resources. I think Windows D for desktop. Yeah, this is resources. So this to-do folder is the one of uh, the one we just created. And then this resources folder contained everything. The UI, the UI, the logos, the images, the font. So this is like the emphasis on the UI. So we are building two pages. It's a simple to do the to do task app. Simple to do task app. Someone raised to, to, to do task app, something like that. And then, um, as can see, just have a floating action button, uh, a theme switcher button icon, and then a uh, Google Developers logo and to do written. And then, um, a little vector for when the stuff is empty. And then, the main to do. Uh, maybe you add your to-dos and when they are completed, you mark them completed, you click on this, uh, 
uh, radio button, so round sub editor, it marks completed and it passed the line. And then if it's deleted, uh, if you want to delete it, you click on the minus icons at the extreme right and you delete them. So that's just it. So before I even continue with this UI I want to build, I want us to remember that, okay, in the world of uh, material design, there are icons hosted on, let me, there are icons hosted on uh, fonts.google.com slash icons. So these icons are actually the icons on which material accesses. You can add custom icons to material. But this bunch of icons we have here usually serves. In most cases, you can add more if, if any of them are not available, but most icons you never use are here. So to use anyone, you just come to their name, WhatsApp, for example, and just use icons.whatsapp in Flutter, and that's all. You click Flutter here. Because of WhatsApp, I'll and that's all. So um, let me go back to our code. So this is our UI. Uh, let me minimize Chrome. This is our UI here. So we are visiting this UI times and coming back. Yes. So something like this. Uh, so we have resources we'll be needing. Uh, things like so. Anytime we have a UI, usually go to get resources like this vector image like these logos, like this uh, font. This font is Google Sans. So it's good to get the font. It's something provided exclusively to Google Developers for branding. And then, uh, yes, I think we need those. So those things were found in this resources folder, logos, images, fonts. I think I'm going to copy them, um, paste them in this to do uh, generated. I think I need to create an asset folder, assets, and then paste them inside. So before continuing, we will need to edit our popspec.yml to include the fonts and assets we just created. But I think we'll just be editing the boilerplate project we just created instead of uh, doing something new. Um, yeah, something like this. So another thing, we'll usually change the popspec.yml. You will need to start, stop the view, stop the application you created and start afresh. Uh, Let's focus on this guy. You can see this thing. Pop spec. So somewhere in your popspec.yml, popspec has keys like the name of the application, description, change the description, you can leave it. Let's change it, let's say GDSC for now. Something like that. And then uh, you see version of Lota, that version, Dependencies, dev dependencies, as a flutter, then the flutter key. So, popspec the YML, you see this flutter pop get running for me by VS Code automatically. Popspec the YML is normally always in use by, uh, the YML is normally always in use by, by, um, that projects. So, but flutter now brought it and now added the flutter key itself, right? So, uh, uses material design true. So this is material design true. Now make it easy for us that most of and the material import at the top of the app import package makes it easy. We can just be using material design related uh, icons and uh, um, objects automatically. So our business is the assets. Somewhere in the comments in the pop the YML, it's commenting in the pop spec in YML folders actually, in YML files, sorry. That uh, you use the hash symbol to so say to add assets to your application and an asset like this. But be careful. In generally, in the in the YML files, white space is a problem. White space refers to uh, white space. Like white space, I mean like maybe enter key or tab key or space key. Usually an issue. So you have to be careful. That's why sometimes I just go to come and on comment like this. Comment control slash on comments in most IDEs. Or oh, yeah. So I think I need to just put my assets slash images. I think that serves. I or maybe on that slash. Mm, the, every other every other this thing that folder will be picked. Oh yes. So that I don't need to come and start listing all the assets one after the other. And then to add forms, to add custom forms, I have to specify them. So 
something like this. The fonts in question, this assets folder, you can see, okay. Oh, not just assets images, even assets slash logos, dash assets slash logos, yes, slash. Then uh, you got the logo, we have Google Developers logo, this angle bracket logo, and we have a white variant of it in case we're in that team, right? And then the images was this uh, uh, vector stuff. And then we have one font, Google Sans Regular. So I think I should just copy the name as it is to avoid errors from my own end, something like that. And then coming down to yeah, assess slash font, coming down back to the pop spec for YML. Let me close this. You can have it's found in assets slash fonts. Then it's not Skylar, but it's original Google Sans. You can actually edit the name of the font and come back and edit in prospect the YML and then use Google Sans instead. So that's it. So in our project, you can you have a project, we're going to edit all these things. So I've made a lot of changes to my prospect the YML. And anytime you do those changes, you need to actually stop the project and start afresh, like stop running, exactly like this. And I think is uh, definitely will be deleting the entire boiler, the entire boiler plate code that uh, this thing provides. So this is our UI. Want to build this guy? So I can minimize it for now. You can delete the entire boiler plate code. This um, provided by Flutter creates so that this thing goes. If I go and delete the whole thing, um, let me delete it with sense. Let me see my app. Maybe container shift n. Then container is just an empty boilerplate code. So the thing goes empty. There's no longer scaffold or any other thing again. <laughs> so I think that would be a good way to do it. In fact, let's clear everybody. Let's go. Let's get rid of everybody. Mm. If I stop everybody like it, it'll be fatal. It'll be fatal. Okay, because my app is not known. So okay, let me. I don't if container works, it doesn't matter your app. It needs a, a, a specification of app, not just the widget. Okay, it worked. So we can, okay, fine. But we need to stop running. Yeah, we stopped the running. This container wasn't very useful. So let's create a stateful widget called, um, let's create a stateful widget called, um, mm, Let's create a stateful widget called page, for example. And another thing is in the world of Flutter, and so in the world of VS Code, sorry about this error of a run app, it will get cleared, okay, uh, when I input something. In the world of VS Code, the world of VS Code with the Flutter, you start typing S T L E S. You see Flutter stateless widget, STFUL, you see Flutter stateful widget. So we are going to be going for a stateful widget because uh, the reason we're going for is, the we're going for a stateful um, widget. Well, I messed up because I. Yeah. Please meet your audio, time. meet your audio, the person that joined. Okay, thanks for that. So, uh, oh. so fine, back to Flutter. So stateful widget, I've seen something. So you start typing, VS Code comes with helpers. You just start typing STFUL like this. You can just auto-generate the stateful widget. It will be stateful widget because there's a lot of things to keep note of, like the theme, like the to do tasks themselves and other things, so we're going to be stateful widgets. So that's it. And maybe to give it a name, we're going to use to do page. See how many people are selected automatically. So uh, that's better because imagine if you are to we can do everything without these helpers, but it's easier with these helpers. So we can now run this app. Mm, it's empty. So, but let me see, it's empty here. Yeah. There's nothing good about it. It's just written in a container. Container means empty. Container is just like div, div in HTML. Yeah, something like that. I come from a, I come from a, a web background, so it's much more relatable. Um, at the end of this, at the end of this, 
implement needs to do app, we may end up having, let me be starting, let me run again, because it took time to build. You may end up having barely just a, um, barely just about 120 or 100 lines of code, yeah. So we, now need, we don't need this key. It's really good sometimes. Uh, explaining how key works is beyond the state of, beyond the scope of to this uh, class. So yeah, let's come into this container. So we let's open up. The first thing we need to work towards is creating the creating the base uh, scaffold as we saw in the previous uh, the previous sorry about that as we saw in the previous spoiler plate to so the scaffold. But we need to return a material app. Yes. Mm, yeah, it's almost done building. I just wanted to launch. The, yeah. Launched. And it's meant to be black and empty because there's nothing, you're not doing anything. So, but when you come here and start with like, let me say, material app. Hmm. So, material app. Yeah, a lot of things are lacking inside. We need to add things like uh, um, theme. So, theme, we can start with the this one, let me see. But our theme, we need to specify our theme. Right, we need things like uh, um, theme data. It's my theme data, and then inside theme data, we need to add something like okay, I sent color. We can add colors. Dot. I'm just closing to this. But this was this person I'm expecting. Sorry about the popping up, uh, popping up um, helper by Visual Studio. It's just to help us, right? Then primary swatch. I prefer light blue to the main. To the main blue that only comes light blue, and then I send color. I can go with the same same color. It's not recommended, but I prefer using because in uh, in the UI provided, the floating action button really takes the color of the ascent color. So that's why I'll have to specify the ascent color as colors of light blue too. How much swatch is bigger than uh, bigger than beta, bigger than thin? So swatch is kind of a recommended combinations of stuff of uh, theme properties, same color, background colors, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, let's just leave it that way for now. They're coming. I meant to use primary color, but when we get to the point, I'll explain why I use primary swatch instead. So the next person is uh, uh, brightness. We want, we'll, we'll add to shoot that thing later. But let's just start with lighting, brightness.light. And then the next person is font family. You want to use Google Sans. Mm. It's somewhere in our prospect, so we don't need to worry. So that's the first guy about uh, that's the first guy about our uh, first person about material app. Another person we can have in the material app is something like there's this debug banner. Okay, let me leave it. You may not see it now. Now on the body. We're returning scaffold, then the scaffold of an app bar. No, nobody, home, sorry. On material app, you return a home, yeah. And then on scaffold, you can return a body. Let me be a body, maybe container. Or something like this. It should not help you look properly and change what's on screen. Yeah. There may be a bar. You could have uh, a bar, a bar type two. So what I like about is the declaration. So you just clear what you need, and that's all. And type two. Will be, let me see. It was to do right. It was to do. So just to do like this. Back to what this thing looks like. Oh, sorry. Right. Uh, load in progress. Maybe I should help it or should we start itself because I made a lot of changes. Okay, let me run again. I made a lot of changes in runtime of so yeah. I just wait for it. So meanwhile, our floating action button can take, sorry, our scaffold, this is, this is it here, and take 
this uh, slash abba slash kafut slash material slash together are just helpers by VS code. It's not like they are part of the uh, it's not like they are part of the code itself. No, they just help us by VS code to help you identify at which point who is found. So floating action button. I can take a floating action button. Uh, use uh, yeah. So you can see the thing has launched. Okay, on press I can pass an, an empty value for now. Yeah, something like that. And then icon. And first, and then maybe icon could be. No, it's not an icon. So yeah, so the floating action button, as you can see, it's just a round blue circle here but if i put maybe the child and maybe use the icon sorry about that icon icon start and yes that works you see the plus icon just mostly forms in the something but he has nothing to do he has nothing doing he has nothing doing so uh that's why, because on press is no on press is the callback function now. Okay. So it's meant to in the future add um, tasks as you create them. But for now, let's leave it that way, plan. Let's focus on our UI. So our UI said something like the body. The body is this. Uh, the, the body is this uh, vector stuff like that. So let's add it. But instead of container, I can have center. Yes, I can have a center because it's centralized. So to add an image in Flutter is very easy. Uh, center child, and then image, the image dot assets. Yes, asset, and then assets slash images slash, uh, I think it was empty, what's PNG, that's it. And that's all, Flutter has brought it in. But then there's a difference between this image here and the one in our user, user interface because the one now UI seems to have a lowered uh, transparency. It's kind of more transparent to reduce focus on it. So I think we just need to maybe wrap it around an opacity. This is another reason why I like VS Code. Sorry about that. And the reason why I write VS Code, I can just come and refactor, right click on this uh, image, refactor it and wrap it around under widget. And maybe the widget can be opacity. So opacity for those coming from web, opacity is like the how opaque it is, uh, uh, yeah, how transparent it is, ranging from one to zero. So maybe we can put an opacity value of, uh, let me see, 0.5, then child of this, something like that. So you see, it has gone opaque, it has gone more transparent now. Yeah, it's, the transparency is comparable. We could reduce, we could maybe, if you take it towards zero, maybe 0 0.2, it gets very, very transparent. If you take it towards one, it gets thicker. That's all. So in Flutter, everything is a widget. Even opacity, which is a style in CSS, is a widget in Flutter. Padding is a widget in Flutter, stuff like that. So it really helps the code and makes it very, very declarative. So one more thing um, before we continue. One more thing. Um, the to do was, uh, there are these to do guys up here was white. The app bar is white and the to do is uh, blue. So, and this debug banner is not meant to be there. So we can remove this debug banner first of all by adding to the material app debug to select mode banner, false. Yeah, and that goes. Another thing is um, white. Another thing is the white, uh, I think is the white app bar. So the app bar, we can change the background color to white. You see background color, uh, colors of white, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. It has changed white already, close to what we have in our user interface. But then the image is not there. So I think to add an image, you can use leading. So there's leading and there's trailing. Leading is what can be used at the beginning of the app bar. So many different widgets in Flutter has leading stops. Yes. So the image, image dot asset, assets slash images slash 
uh, I think that thing should be Google there. No, it was in logo, sorry. So avoid such errors sometimes to just come and copy and paste. Google Devs color, rename, copy path or copy relative path. No, I don't think I want to copy the path server. Just, okay, copy relative path, yes. Uh, no, not you. Control V, yeah. Uh, but then, uh, you know, Windows uses backslashes. Why? Linux uses fault, and Flutter uses the fault slash. So that's it. You can see the uh, the image here, right? So we are getting there. But then there is another, uh, let's say, margin close to the left of this image, Google Best, but it's not there in our, you know, our Flutter app. So to add it, you can come here to this leading, maybe uh, wrap the image around a I doubt you can add a padding directly to this image, asset image. And so we need to wrap it around maybe a padding and give it the left padding. You can wrap it around a container and give the left padding. You have any options. So on our own, without using the VS Code helper, we should have something like this. Uh, padding. With the padding. And let me say, before giving the padding value, I'm coming to give the padding value. Then child image and then uh, yes so but i'm not giving the padding value so padding giving padding or margins value in flutter use a, a keyword called edge insets edge insets edge insets like this so edge insets have many many uh, values whether it's edge insets of all or edge just dots uh, from left top right bottom or symmetric that is vertical and horizontal padding. So, or dot only, just specify only one person, which I'm going to go because I'm interested just on the left side. And maybe you ask it 16, for example. Okay, it has shifted the image to 16. Yeah, and it has even reduced the image a bit to so making it more palatable instead of how large it was before. And that's all. So we have our child image asset. And the last person lacking is the icon button at the top right of given this ui now this moon icon so this moon icon is icon for dark mode right so i think if we go um go to app bar add actions and then in actions you can add maybe icon button on press to be null or empty instead of putting person or please or mutual mute your mic the person that just joined Instead of uh, putting no, put an empty function because I think, yeah. And then icon, you can put an icon and give it icon start. Uh, it's a dark mode. We're going to come back and make it work, but I think that's all. So there we started our first page of the UI. We've not added functionality like clicking the task button to make it work or clicking the theme button to make the theme change. So, but we are coming to that. So at this point, it's worth committing these changes to Git yet, because I think after this, we're gonna make the source code available on GDSC for nice GitHub account, GitHub organization for anybody that wants to reference and build by themselves. So with that being said, um, we can be asking questions now. Any questions? Any questions? Anybody with any questions so far? Let me add, let me add the resources here. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, the emulator you are using, um, I think I think uh, you should tell us like how set it up because I know that uh, uh, the emulator is any motion. I don't know how to, how like people will be able to get a standard on emulator if they can be able to connect it to Nota. Come back, come back, repeat your question, please. What I'm saying is that the mm -hmm. emulator has connected to Flutter. How do you connect the emulator to Flutter? Yeah. Or does okay. it come that way? Once you download Flutter, the emulator comes in that oh, okay. Or you have I understand. Okay. Let me explain. So if you go to the Android documentation on the Android, so, sorry. 
flutter document for set, flutter setting of parts on flutter documentation flutter.dev website it specified that for a working version of flutter someone raised their hand i mean the working version of flutter you need to um, you need to have uh, android studio properly set up and installed like now i have android studio set up here uh to uh the Android Studio comes with the Android dependencies and comes with uh, um, the Android Virtual Device Manager, the AVD, from which you can manage emulators. So I think this is it, AVD. So in this AVD now is where you actually create the Flutter, the Android emulators, right? I can create a new one and uh, choose anybody, choose any size I like. Then if I go on next, I mean, I've downloaded this uh, Android 11, Image, I can download the rest and stuff like that, and it's creating emulator, right? That works with Android Studio. But then Flutter itself can see those things. Like the reason there's a link between Flutter and Android and Android Studio in, in, in uh, Flutter setup. Like it's something automatic. The moment you just install Flutter Finish and then you install Android Studio, and I think you need to add it to your path or to an environment variable and Android, and Flutter detects. The, the installed location of Android Studio. That's all, because Flutter will automatically detect all the other necessary Android-related dependencies, ADB on the Android emulator and other ones. So it cannot be, it's going to be kind of automatic, right? So when you can launch, 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 launch an emulator, you will not necessarily now need to be going through the Android Virtual Device Manager through Android Studio to launch an emulator. The Flutter command itself can just launch the emulator for you. Flutter, you have of the Flutter commands, hope you don't see my yes, yes code. Flutter emulators, enter. You see, it gives you one emulator available. I named it Mary, so you can have you know, Google, Android. So it tells you to run emulator, run Flutter's emulator, dash dash launch emulator ID. That's what now I'll type Mary. And I can create a new emulator directly from here. Flutter emulators, dash dash create. Maybe, uh, let me name it GDSE. So it's kind of, I think it's going to create based on um, the image, you see Flutter emulator created successfully based on the image available in the Android Studio. If there was no image, it may try to download the image from me or something like that, I've never tried that before. And another thing is that because this emulator has been created now, it will be available from the Flutter, if I do Flutter devices, you can see, Please mute your audio, the person speaking. You can see uh, uh, this first emulator, Android SDK emulator, and then Chrome and Edge. Okay. Yeah, something like that. So, uh, oh, I was expecting the emulator to show, but it didn't show. Whatever. Uh, okay, I think I have to launch the second emulator. Flutter emulators. That's that's launch. I'm trying to make you understand that Flutter has a connection with the Android uh, Android SDK. So true Flutter, true Flutter commands you can. What Android you know, would is that Flutter is actually doing what Android what is supposed to do directly in Android Studio for you. So I can do Flutter yeah. dash dash launch um, um, GDSC. The emulator just created. It's separate from this Mary emulator. Oh, it didn't yeah. even work. Okay, no, it said emulator Flutter emulator created directly, created successfully. So you didn't even create, okay, with Flutter emulators. You didn't even create your own. Name I gave it, you created with its own concern. No problem. Mm. Okay. Uh, wait, Flutter dash load. Okay, I don't know. Okay, I meant specifying name. I meant specifying name. Okay, let me go with it again. Flutter emulators dash dash create. I just name GDSC. Mm. So if it creates now. Fine, emulator GDS created successfully. So if I do Flutter, emulator, emulators, dash dash, uh, launch, sorry, like open, start the emulator, GDSC, it's not start a valid emulator. Like okay. it will open it up with, like just the way this guy is opened. I now seeing this GDS, this second emulator is trying to start up, right? Yeah. And if I still yeah. come, let me take it to the side of the screen, so that while it's opening. If I still come and maybe do Flutter devices now, it's a device to show now four devices instead of three devices. Okay, it's still showing three devices. 
And then the fourth one he said, in the five, five, six, six, this one is offline. I think I need to turn it on. Okay, I've turned it on Google, it's coming, something like that. Uh, I think it's built off Nexus something. And if I launch other devices, um, okay, it's still offline, it's still coming. You know, this is the first time booting, so it may take a little longer than others. So there's something like that. When you're done, it just uh, shows you. And another thing is, why it may be better to be creating them through Android Studio is because of the skins. Because in Android Studio, you, when you're creating a meeting in Android Studio, you have an ability to create this white skin I gave mine, I think whether it's Nexus, uh, whether it's yes. 5 or Nexus, yeah. whatever. But now, this, this one was bad because uh, I don't think the CLI, the CLI may have the options, the photo CLI may have the options to choose all of those, but I mean, that's beyond the scope of this class uh, uh, to be. So that's it. You have your second emulator on you and other devices now. I think Flutter should now identify a fourth one that see. Android is the key yeah. for this one. And you see, one was in Android 10, and that was Android 11. So the one yeah, I was using previously was built of Android 10. That's one I created from Android Studio, but you see the second one was from Android 11. Now, because VS Code has um, has the Flutter plugin, Flutter, uh, not extension, sorry, installed. You now see, if I click on this place, you can see it identifies the different, these two emulators, and it tries to it. And if I plug in my own external phone, VS Code will see it. And you can select who you want to use and still, start a Flutter emulator or create an Android emulator and still, um, when you run, it's not run in that context. Hope I've answered you now. So I can, uh, close, yeah, I can close this emulator and um, I'm interested. it's not going to compose shut down, sir. So and close this emulator and um, so that, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me know what happened on screen. And then if I do Flutter devices, you still need three now. Sorry, the extra character was needed. You see only three devices, no longer for again. Hope you now understand. But the best part of Flutter yeah. is the fact that even if you don't set up Android Studio, you can be doing everything on web. Chrome and Edge can serve. You can still be doing them on Chrome. You can still be doing them on Edge. And then um, yeah. testing the code and all those things. But I prefer starting out the emulator because uh, of the hot reload feature. In Flutter web, hot reload is not available. It's what we oh, have rather have for three starts. So as you're making these dynamic changes and running them, whenever we want come over to um, come over to when we make the change, what to reflect, it's going to refresh the whole page. So it may not be a problem now, but then when we start adding some to-dos and editing them, you will be kind of stress because you have to be adding the to-dos manually and things like that. So that will not really be pleasant. You understand? So that's why uh, I didn't go for religion for that way. And besides, the Android emulator is small and it gives the more feel of how you're going to look on mobile. And you can shift it to one side of the screen and keep the editor on one side. So that's why I prefer using the Android emulator rather than using a uh, web. So hope that question is answered about uh, which emulator was used or is actually an Android emulator. Uh, any other person with questions or something like that? Yeah. Someone raised the thing, a, a hand here. Yeah, you can unmute your mic and speak. Okay, um, can I hear you? I'm hearing you. Okay. Yeah, um, yes, okay. So um I have a question. I don't know, can you hear me? We are hearing, go ahead. Okay, um coming from someone who who develops um web applications. Yes. I'm looking at this the um the application, I'm in the can I call the components? I can see the logo. I can see the the icons, the add icon and the dark mode. And they all seem positioned perfectly. Like, yes. Like someone normally writes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript knows that we actually have to write extra code to put this. this put component. them in place. Exactly. Yes. So how, 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 because I don't actually see. How it is being implemented, and having it to align perfectly. Like, how, how is it being done? So that's uh, what the photo, that's what the photo framework has taken care of. The photo framework takes care of those alignments and those arrangements, and still give you flexibility to edit them. Like I added padding to the image, I could still add padding to the text and change them. 
the photo framework took care of those and added them. We just need to pass uh, maybe the logo as a leading feature, a leading, um, a leading uh, property, the title as text to do, the background color, and action buttons. You can add more action buttons, not just the theme changing action button. Even the, op the opaque uh, center vector image for empty, this one, just wrapping around center, a center, a center widget, just take care of making it centralized. So even if you have a wide, okay, why we're talking about it, even if you launch this code in a wide, uh, let me launch it in Chrome, in a wide, uh, where's that wrong button? In a wide screen like Chrome for web, it is still be centralized. So the answer to your question is that Flutter takes care of most of those things. That's why it's a very good UI toolkit. Like you won't really need to go through all that stress again. Like everything is already taken care of you. Like most of those alignments you're talking about, do you understand? Okay, okay. And how good it is, it's good for both the web platform and both the uh, mobile platforms even. And the desktop is very becoming a thing in Flutter, like in more recent versions of Flutter, desktop is a stop. So Chrome has loaded or Chrome is loading. Let's just wait for it. Mm. So yeah, you can see the image is in the center. Do you understand? If I still go further into the code and edit the, the the uh, to do text, it will expand. If I edit the font size to increase, or I edit the padding to this logo by the left, it will still increase. You can see a floating action button. So, what I tried, it's a good stuff to start using. Do we understand now? No, okay. Go no, ahead. No, go ahead. So you can actually. So you can actually use Flutter to develop web as well as Android applications. Very well, very well, very well. Yeah. Very well. The only disadvantage you can use in developing web is that uh, it is very, very, very SEO unfriendly. Like uh, the thing is dynamically loaded by that JavaScript runtime. Okay, okay, talking about that and JavaScript. The reason why, let me stop this uh, web view. The reason why, uh, it was a second runner, so wait, excuse me. Oh. Mm -hmm. So the reason why uh, that works very well with web is this. When that was created by some Google engineers in 2010 or thereabouts, <laughs> they made a programming language that can auto transpile to JavaScript. So when you write valid that code, that can do some things, you can run some commands with that and the code will change to JavaScript, just like that. Then when the Flutter team set up, started trying to create a UI toolkit in some four years later, five years later, I think 2014 or so, they, uh, they did their surveys. They were checking which program language would be the best fit and they sorted out to that and that was the best fit for many reasons. Maybe like this, they are uh, named parameters is what we have leveraged since. You notice normally this code I'm meant to, put to use new scaffold, new abar, new padding, but that is so dynamic you can forget about the new. And uh, this scaffold now, like these things are just the uh, parameters, like the arguments I meant to say, arguments, and you're giving arguments, named arguments. So you specify about this kind of one, title, this. So instead of just putting positional arguments as we are used to, like text now, text takes one positional argument to do. Image.asset takes one positional argument, the URL of the image. But then edge inserts not only takes a named argument left with 16. You understand? You understand? So they having both named and positioned arguments or parameters was another feature that made that work well. But back to the web, the fact that makes that transparent to JavaScript, Flutter simply leveraged it. And okay, since we are writing in that code, after we have built the UI, we can make it workable in JavaScript. And so you can have work, working web. So at runtime, the Flutter framework populates the web page with whatever thing is populated through the JavaScript that has been transpired from that. Because browsers understand only JavaScript and nothing else. And thank God, that could now understand them. That can transpire to JavaScript. So Flutter simply leveraged it. And another thing is, uh, uh, as I was saying about SEO friendly, just like with most modern uh, JavaScript frameworks, Angular, React, and all the rest that have been populated at runtime, uh, SEO doesn't really work. So you may need some uh, server-side renderer. Sorry, I'm going out of scope. Server-side renderer to render this. Someone's mic is not muted. Please mute the mic. If it's turning the audio. 
so it renders the it renders the uh, yeah which renders uh, HTML components out of time for SEO, like for Google bots or search engine bots. So, but then Flutter doesn't yet have that. So that may be the only advantage of using Flutter web. But aside that, Flutter web is cool. So any other question before we continue? Yeah, no other question, so I can continue. So, okay. So I thought that uh, Pardon? God time was using up the time, I don't know if they are saying his name. Okay, you got time months here from me. Yeah, you can go on. Maybe towards the end, I'll ask the question. Okay, okay, it's not something related to the things we've done so far. There's just flutter, right? Uh, let me ask this something related, anyways. If it's my, something my related to what is, done, okay, go ahead. Yes, my question is. Normally now, let me yes. say in this your logo, this Google logo now. Yes. Let me say you put it in two places. Uh -huh. yeah. Let me say put it in two places of, of this project now. If you copy this code, let me say this line of code and paste it where it is supposed to be. If at the end of the day, let me say you want to do changes, maybe you want to change the logo. Yeah. If you change the logo now, will you, will you, you come and start writing, like start editing the name here in the code? Okay. If it's in web now, if it's web now, we declare a variable, refer to maybe some part of the parts. Let me say this asset logo. Yeah. Then if you reach, if you reach this place, this uh, logo image, you know, the image gone, gone. That's the one you can, that's the one you can, it is that so that if it is one particular variable there, it can reflect in the two pages, like in the two places where the image appear. This thing you said now is very, very doable. You can do it, okay? So you can just call me and declare, uh, and just come to me and declare maybe constant. We usually like using key. Okay, for constant, let me say string, final self. Yeah, final, final means it won't change. It helps in, uh, that final keyword helps in build time. You have certain build, build time, maybe, okay, fine. You have certain in build time. We can omit it, we can put it, stuff like that. So let me say final string, key, uh, IMG prefix, and just, like that equals to assets slash images slash something like this and then when i come here i delete this guy which was a second slash there there was a second slash i delete this guy i add this dollar sign and key img prefix sorry key img prefix so i will have to uh, simply like this, which is sometimes optional. Yes. Okay. Did I add a slash? Okay, IMG prefix. Uh, okay, that didn't work. Something is wrong. So this work. But what you said is very doable. Well, something is wrong entirely. I've already changed too much. Let me help restart. Am I getting something wrong? Was it something we were doing before I didn't do now? So by God's time, what you said is very, uh, okay, it's logos, not images. Oh. Okay. You see, box are always very, very introducible. So let me change this to K logo prefix. K logo prefix. Or, or maybe K logo directly, let's make it shorter. And then this will be logos. And then. Hey, logo. This guy. What happened again now? I know uh, it's not possible to use something like competition. Use? To concatenate it or something. It is a concatenation I'm doing now. To concatenate, you simply put a dollar sign and wrap it in brackets. 
But it's like maybe there's something I'm doing wrong about making it not to work. Do you understand? Okay, it's fine. I think hmm? I have a suggestion. Like, I have a suggestion. Okay, time, can you hear me? Okay, time. Yes, I can hear you. First time, I think so, this is what you're looking for. Or maybe, uh, I think maybe it's not working because it's not in context. Maybe I should put it in context. Can I go? Wait, wait, wait. It's something like this. So, you really must put on a scope. It was outside the main method entirely. Okay, so what, what I'm trying to say is that maybe uh, one time, if you want to do something like that, uh, you might have these or something like that have the same name. Name change. I don't know if you get me. So maybe if the name is um, logo dot png or something, you name the new. The new image that you want to replace as logo.png so that if we change it. Okay, so that's another angle. Uh, yeah, because tell me what you're saying. You're saying that if you really have those kind of renames uh, up wide, so you can just come and rename the rename the, the image itself instead of renaming the code. But what you're saying, Ghost Time, is very doable. And I think we've just done it that instead of passing a hard coding, hard coded strings, which are very, very discouraged. You can just come and pass them. And in most cases, they must have been supplied elsewhere. Like they must have been supplied elsewhere, uh, maybe in another file, maybe a constants.dat file. And then you import the constants.dat file. Maybe I can even do that. Mm, Control X, delete. But I won't do it again because it's an error. Import constants.dat to uh, Control N, Control V. Uh, home, something like this. Control S. Constants of that. So you import the constant of that file, and in the constant of that file, that string that exists here will just be picked up from here, and that's all. Do you understand now? Yes. Yeah, so it's very doable. It's achievable. What you're talking about, like not had coding the names, it's achievable, but I didn't bother bringing it because I wanted us to focus more on being comfortable with the beginning. But what you said was very what it's like. But the what you put up was very, very what it. So I don't know if we should leave it this way or delete it. You can even add a logo colored color because we still need the colored and the black one. Mm -hmm. So for your sake, uh, a logo color. I'm going to leave it this way. And it's even good because the full URL was very long. And let me create scale logo white. The full URL was very long, so this one serves. Something like this. We'll use the white later on. Um, so that will be all for now. So thanks for bringing that up, God's time. It's really, really good. So I don't know, at this font size of the editor, I put seeing the screen clearly because I've been expanding the font size um, all across, feeling like okay, it helps to visualize more, but it's at the expense of scrolling a lot. So I post this in the screen. Can I leave this particular font size for you? Anybody? Nobody answered. Do you hear what I said? I said I didn't. I didn't. Okay, first time saying the chat, I can increase it. No problem. Don't worry, Leo. I was like, should I be increasing the font size or should I leave them small? It's okay. So, um, I think we are settled with that. Any other questions so far? Uh, so, I wanted to commit in Git. Uh, I wanted to add the product to Git. Git in it. Sorry, I initialized Git already. The time Leo put us up on session about emulators. And I went and copied. The resources folder, uh, yeah, I brought resources folder so that the UI will be available to anybody that will want to do it. Or maybe I should just let me just copy the UI and delete because it's a double copy. The resources folder is already um, here. So let me just bring the UI control X, control V, 
if you can get into the resources because I copied everything into assets folder then I think this works and we can now commit to git so uh no no not this guy Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, git add everybody. Um, git commit uh, dash m. Well, mm, let me use the code commit bar so that I can do multi line. Uh, something like okay, uh, implemented is the initial commit right to end initial control shoot home. Then backspace implemented. No, initial commit. Oh, there's a readme. Let me edit the readme to readme. No, not that readme. Mm. Yes, to do Excels and then. Back to this uh, yield stuff. So the initial commit implemented first page, first uh, page of the UI uh, of landing with no tax, something like this. That serves. So we can commit this. Uh, oh, damn. They change. I mean, yeah, that works. So after this, we're going to add all these uh, these people to our GDSC fly GitHub people so that anybody can see it. Uh, so back to uh, um. So let me my give us screen context. So yes, we've achieved this right. So the next part of our UI to be achieved is uh, with, let me get it back again. Next up to the UI. This one. So the actual UI coding. So before going, yeah, the actual UI coding. So the, uh, uh, we have not implemented the theme switching button. Okay, maybe we implement it at the end, at the end of the, after implementing it to do job, the last thing we'll do, then we'll be done with today. So we have a list of a vertical column. Oh, columns are vertical already. So we have a column. Columns in Flutter, uh, yeah, we have a column of to dos. A to do can be completed or not. It has some text in it, some content, and it can be deleted with some driver button. So we can really think of a to do object. Maybe we can create a class for that will the old to dos with maybe just a completed Boolean feature, a Boolean attribute or property, sorry, and a, a text containing the text of the to do itself. Yeah, something like that and then uh yeah and then from there we can now inside our body instead of this center image when there are to do's we can be we can show them out something like that so with that in mind i think we can start uh first guy is so that's why it's good to use a stateful object so that when state changes can in state so we can come here and declare a to do's array, you know, before declaring it, let's come up here maybe and declare a to do class. Class to do, just a very simple something. Kind of a model, right? And then uh, it could have a Boolean attribute of incompleted or not. At the beginning, it's be false, right? And then a string attribute of maybe, um, let me say the content of the to do, yeah cost to false because empty string yeah so we can create a constructor we can omit it right because the reason why we can omit the constructor is that the attribute the properties that the to do class comes with already have default values if not when the person is creating an empty to do like empty the cost will be blinking on that empty to do and that will be okay so there will be no need to uh, a construct constructor something like that like given that they already have default values for the properties of the to-do model class, I don't think we still need to uh, 
collect um, properties at constructor time. So if, if not, I'd have not to add a constructor like this to do. Come add a constructor like this, and that's very okay. You can see come back and see add a constructor like this um, completed. Uh, this dot completed. Um, this dot content. This still works, but we can omit it, given that we take the direct values and given the fact that with the user have to enter these things in runtime, and you cannot be creating a computer to do what creation time. And this must have created it to do before you're completing it to these cells. So with that said, we'll come and create a list of to-dos. For those coming from JavaScript, what we have as arrays in JavaScript are listed in, in that. So we can say list of to-do. And JavaScript, that is type. So we have to put this in angle bracket. To a list of to-do, a list of to-dos equals to an empty array like this. That works, right? So we have an entry like this. So uh, we can come here and see where's that body? Body center. Center is child obesity. So instead of a center, we can have uh, to do. So instead of a center, we want this center to be shown. Where's, sorry, where's that? Uh, we want this center with this uh, less opaque uh, empty image to be shown only when. There is no to do in the to do's array. So we can come here and use a ternary operator. Let me control N. The ternary operator says condition, question mark, then uh, if true, what happens? A statement if true. I'm sorry, this guy is blocking that view. And stubborn boy. Oops. Statement if true. statement it false. So many people, many programming languages have these particular kind of statements. But the thing is that it usually has to be a one-time stuff and sometimes a returnable thing. So instead of having if, instead of having this kind of code where you write if condition statement if true, sorry, if true, and else statement if false, this thing is still usable and very good. In fact, we recommend using these uh, five lines of when you're, when the thing could span statements. It's not where you have error of statements. You have many, not just one statement, if true, many things will happen. Or when there are void, when they are void things, when the things are not returning a value. But in cases where you're returning a value and just one line stuff, or the thing can be one line, no more lined, but you can use this particular syntax. So let's go for the scenario operator. Mm -hmm. so four. And two, the ternary repeater in this body. So we're returning an empty, a centered image, a center stuff. But now we can come here and write if to do is empty, dot is empty. So that's another good thing for that. Instead of writing it to do's dot length equals to zero, you can do it to do that is empty. And it's a direct access, so you don't need to call it as a method. Return center with all these. Else, let me say return container for now. And then let's format it, something like this. So if to do this empty return center, else return this container, Hope you guys understand what's happening at this point. So to do this empty and still returning this. So instead of returning container, let me say return text to do is not empty. To do this is not empty. So that we see it in function. And then maybe here, sorry about this. Maybe here, I can come and add uh, an example to do, to do. Yeah, something like that. So there's one to be inside this to do, and uh, use it difference now. Something like let's load please. Yeah, start please. Okay, something okay fine. You see, to do is not empty. Import the text. All right, so that works. <laughs> so we are supposed to build one. First one vertical line of this thing we start before we now multiply them. So let's just focus on one. So if this is not empty, we need a row. This is a row, a row, and then he has three children. He has uh, maybe the text, the text content of the to do, the icon at the top, and the minus at the bottom at the at the end. So we can come here and see instead of this return. So let's edit this person. 
Let's say the default to do comes with some valid text. Let me say deliver to the store. Deliver to these uh, backspace. So I hope people understand why I did this extra slash to kind of escape this uh, quotes, or sometimes you can add double quotes and use a single quote inside. So coming here, let me see, I use rule. Children, the rule takes children. So the first child will be, uh, first child will be the icon, the leading icon. So I think that icon in material design is, uh, let's go on for it. It should be round, it should be round somebody. Okay, we're in this icons page. It should be the rounded, but that should be task, sorry. I just want to be sure with me. It's not round. Is it circle? Oh, it's not this one. Okay, radio button on check. That's the name. So in Flutter, we're meant to call it this way. Radio button on check. No, outlined exactly. Uh, so if you come back here, the first one will be material design icon, radio button on check. Okay. Icon starts, yeah, something like that. So you can see it here. And then the next person will be text. So maybe for the text content, we can use uh, text and its value is going to be to do zero, but uh, content, stuff like that. Uh, and then the last person will be under icon. So the minus, the minus one is, I think it's icons dot, um, uh, then I'll have it off. It's not maximize or minimize. I think horizontal rule, yes. Let's double confirm. There is minimize. Minimize. No, minimize is actually low. It should be at the bottom. So we want something that will be in the middle. Horizontal rule. Yes, it's this guy. So. Select and horizontal row, something like that. Icon starts horizontal row. So that is it about creating one row. Uh, I think I'll have to have to start to reflect the change in content. The reason why changing content is not showing is because there's no set state. But this thing's not looking good compared to our UI. Our UI was well spaced out. So we have some work to do, things like adding padding. So uh, adding padding and making it space out. So we could add things like, uh, Mean axis alignment, alignment, but no, not center. Cross axis alignment or adding some paddings or things like that. But I won't really stress on making this thing. Okay, let's go ahead. Mean axis alignment. Uh, axis align, axis alignment, mean axis alignment, but space between, something like flex space between, control S. Uh, but we don't like the way this guy now centered. But we are coming. I don't think it's one trying to ask a question. Oh, meter their mic because I'm meeting their mic. Uh, row doesn't take part in. You may have to wrap it around your container to take part in and things like that. So, but let's not do too much on this because this is not what we're going to end up using. It's not what we're going to, what we're going to end up using. Uh, we're going to end up using a list style, and I'll explain why. Fine, let's finish this one. In this text, we can change the styling, we can make it more, uh, and increase the font size, let me see, font size. Okay. Please unmute your mic, whoever has on, on textile. Textile font size, uh, let me see, 20 pixels. Okay, yeah, it grew into larger. But then this uh, minutes and I've seen the team wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. I don't want to continue eating this code because I feel like we've delayed a lot of time in this place. I want us to go straight to the point. There is a problem with to do with this uh, with this row. Row has a well defined width in Flutter. So when you use uh, when you use it doesn't when you when the text in this uh, to do. That the to do the this the user may set in the to do overflows the 
content. Let me let me show one thing about. It's going to try. Flutter is going to try an error. Something like this. Uh, let me add another one. Self. Let me be sure. So Flutter is going to try an error. This yellow pixel something. So you need to explicitly set it to wrap or things like that. And not just that. If we wrapped uh, this rule now in column, in, the, in many of these rules in a column, and maybe we kind of added a for loop of for the number of to do's available, uh, list out these rules, the column two needs the fixed height. But because we don't know the fixed height of how many to do's in runtime, it doesn't serve. So Flutter has this, uh, this widget called list view. Uh, another thing is I always sort out the documentation uh, list view. What's it? List view, list view, data documentation. This view, right? This view is a it's just like the uh, column, but then it's scrollable. If you come from, it's a, yeah, divs, divs by default in web are scrollable, but then by default in Flutter, they are not scrollable. Sorry, I didn't mean to play this audio. And then uh, something like this. So if you have a, a widget that keeps growing, you can put it in a list view and then give it children. <laughs> so, but the other thing is that list view can take many, uh, list view can take many, many children uh, objects or can take dynamic children objects. And it has some static methods to help you build them. Like the four of them are listed here. The default list view construct, they do, and then there's list view builder, list view separated and all those things. So we're using Builder because Builder comes with um, Builder comes with the ability to maybe do something. Like Builder gives you an index, like an index, like uh, int, like I see it's, it's written over an array and you can maybe use it for other things you want in an app and that's what we're gonna use. So let me comment out this, our rule. Mm. And then maybe do this view Builder. Or instead of even commenting out our rule, let me first of all correct these errors I have in the UI. Then come here. And then maybe do this view builder. Uh, this view builder, yes, something like this. This is the rule here, right? Let me cut it. It's my clipboard. And then do this view dot builder. So this view, we're using this view first because it is a scalable column. We don't just want a column. Well, I've used column and populated many rules, but by the time you have so many in runtime, it won't fit, it won't scroll. That's what for you. And then when you list your builder, it takes many uh, uh, parameters. There is item count, item builder, padding, many things you may want. So, but this item builder is a function that takes two parameters. One, context, two, the index, I'm just call it i. And then uh, it needs to return a widget to something like that. I've pasted back the rule. It needs to return a widget. So instead of coding, I can understand what's happening here. So now this list view builder, I didn't give it an item count. So it's returning it uh, irrespective, like finishing, finishing. And you can scroll, like I can, can scroll, I'm continuously scrolling this uh, view builder. So if I give an item count of, and, and I had put it zero, I didn't use I. If I use I now, when I is zero, it should return, okay, there's now an error because things have gone wrong and that's okay. But if I now come here in this my list view builder and give it an item count, and maybe the item count is to do's dot length, how many items I have, everything comes back to normal. So now we are confident that as we are adding, okay, let me not restart. I mean, the reason why this thing is not seeing the changes in this uh, uh, virtual desktop was because I haven't called set state. The moment I called set state, the whole magic changes. And I'll explain what that means when the time comes. So, um, uh, yeah. So, but this rule, I said this rule would work, and we're going to use a different uh, widget. But before then, I think we are good to go that we already have some. So maybe if there are some uh, to do's in our to do array. So maybe we can control copy and something like this, or maybe add three. So 
So our list build builder is going to add three. Let me reload. Ah, we start. Sorry. Set state is not called. So we have three list build builders, but there's no padding. It's so concentrated. So I can add padding to each of the items in this builder. So padding. Let me say edge insets dot um, edge insets dot all. We have to refer to our our uh, UI. Let me say sixteen. Mm -hmm. uh, 16. So I think that's fair. I can leave it that way. Mm, yeah, it's meant to be a bottom padding, but let's leave it for now. I doubt if this view that takes margin two, it doesn't. So that's okay. The least view that the least view view that is the entire margin space, right? So, but for the ones in between the, the rules, we are coming, we're going to work on that. So, like I said, uh, like I said, it's gonna be it's the next next step. Uh, sorry about the link. The next deliver to this talk. The next uh the bottom padding. So we're not gonna use rule, right? We're gonna use rule. We're gonna use a widget called list style, and I'll explain why. List style makes it easy. The style butter. This style makes it easy to to be a member of a list view or a column or something like that. And another reason why I like this style because it comes with um, title, leading, and trailing. You can see how it's being used here. So it fits our purpose. Like we have a leading icon, a title, and a trailing icon. It fits our purpose. Just the way you had an app bar, just the way Hillary asked before, that how can we get this thing perfectly, that we had an ending icon here, a title, and a a leading leading was the word they used instead of calling an icon because it wasn't supposed to be an icon. In most cases, in most cases, they are icons. But consequently, you could end up having things like images or things like that. So calling them icon was unfair. So another thing with this, uh, another thing with uh, why we're using this style, and that mm, sorry, and that reason why Flutter is good because it comes spreaded with so many, many, many widgets. You go to the documentation side on this left panel, you see so many. So many uh, classes I'm scrolling through available for use in different things. So with more experience or with more follow along codings or with more tutorials, you'll be comfortable with the many available Flutter um, objects used. At least from here, we have already had a row, list view, column, center, list view, builder, container. Container is the empty, container is the most flexible. In fact, every, yeah, the most outbar, scaffold and other things. So uh, before we start of time, let's come back to edit this rule. So say we're not going to edit rule, we're going to use rule, we're going to use, um, we're going to use list view, yeah, list style. Yes, that was the word you said. So list style doesn't take children. So if I write list style here, it takes leading, it takes leading, title, trailing, things like that. So I can add leading, sorry, control Z, boom. Leading and add a title, and I can add trailing like this. Perfect. But the UI corrected itself. I didn't even waste much time. And that was it. And that was just it. So that was another reason why I was like, let's not go through changing the alignments and stuff like that. So to Hillary that asked that question, uh, it's also taken care of. So when you take this style, you see the padding now applied to everybody on its own, and it's not too much. If I reduce it to it, it's better. Or better still, um, the vertical padding, the vertical padding needs to be high, but the horizontal needs to be less. So I can use dot symmetric vertical 16. Mm -hmm. And then maybe horizontal, or maybe it's it horizontal. No, at least I has added the padding itself. So that serves. So we are getting close to our user interface. So we have this. Mm, that's good. Um, so, but these buttons are not working. These are not even buttons, they are just icons. We'll have to convert them to icon buttons and convert these ones to icon buttons. So, um, before we start adding functionality, and we need to make it clickable and stuff like that. But we've successfully built the UI, something like that. We could even make this thing strike through. We can come text our font size. After font size, we can do a, is it text decoration or something? How do you even strike through again? 
like uh okay i'll get it. let's i'll remember when i remember i'll get it back for you so um with that being said any question so far i think we can commit to this little change we've made it's good to make your commits atomic so that anybody following along can or going to the code one after the other can know what to do or know what's to be done so any questions so far or should we commit and continue any questions Okay, no questions. Nobody even commented or something. So no question. Fine. So I can commit. Let me go to Git and say. So if you notice the changes we've made, we've simply introduced the. Uh, so to recap, we introduced this to do class that will guide us. We added a to do uh, um, object uh, to a to do um, property which should be changed, which is part of our state. So we will start calling init state or sorry create state or. Or not create or init, change state, set state. Thank you, set. I'm not calling set state. And when that make calls, set, make change calls, so that's when we must have made these icons, icon buttons. We must have added or deleted them or edit the content. So we'll be calling set state to be editing the to do value and reflecting the new values. So we use this view dot view that to create these styles, something like that. So I think it's time we commit. Um, create to do class. And implement to do UI. Period. That's what we're using this commit. And you can now go back and continue. So that was it about, sorry about this, sorry about this one. So I think we are falling along, no questions for now. So the next thing now is to add functionality. Hmm. I think the first person we want to be the first persons we want to be adding are things like deleting the to do and adding it to do instead of adding them programmatically. So these buttons are not working. We need to convert them to icon buttons, right? This one is already an icon button, the floating action button. But then we the add the callback function is not valid, so we may want to add it there. So on pressed, we can call me and call set state. We can call set state like this. And then on calling set state, we can come to set state and say uh, to do's dot add. Yeah, we can say to do's dot add a new to do period. That's just all. So this one I didn't need to do for us. Let me restart so that show you reflects. So if I add a new to do like this, you see new to do's have been added for us automatically. And that was that was just the end. So Flutter is very easy. The reason why we need to wrap this thing in set state because this thing affects all of our state objects, all of our state properties, like the to do's array, and then it needs to rebuild the UI. So by the time the UI is going to be rebuilt, we are confident that the build method is going to come back and read and see this list view builder and return the as many list styles are contained because to do's length has been updated. So we want it to reflect in the user interface. If I have to start again, I'll see just only three to do's that are reflected in this my three to do's at the beginning. Something like that. So another thing we want to do is we want to make the trading icon that when this horizontal rule is clicked, we delete it, right? So we uh, we need to wrap this thing around icon button. You can if you can either use the refactor option in VS Code or do it by hand. Wrap around icon button. So an icon button takes a child, an icon child, and it takes an unpressed. It doesn't take. Uh, child like other widget takes an icon child and takes an unpressed unpressed like what happens if you're pressed no list for this style unpressed yeah something like this it should be a a a function so you see if this is not clickable unlike before right if you want let me show you control z let me undo stuff like that before it wasn't clickable so it wasn't the bottom or just an icon there I can't click on it, but now if I redo all these things, it's an icon button that is pressable. If I now come and click now, it's doing something, but because the callback is empty, not on Apple, it's not really good to use no when empty callback. When you use no, it will be disabled, or it will be like I see there's no, it's not a button, but when you use an empty callback, uh, there'll be at least some feedback. Uh, I don't know if this matters, but yeah. 
<laughs> so like the time we added the floating action button add icon, we want to use set state to uh, make set state to maybe remove to do dot remove at it's a list. So you have a remove at i. And that's all. You need the semicolon at the end. <laughs> and that was it. You can add as many, you can delete as many. So, but to make a code cleaner, so that's just it. So that's very simple. That's simple. To make a code cleaner, you can come and copy out these set states methods we've been calling, or we can even use one liners like this, and uh, but get rid of semicolon. One liners like this. Uh, something similar. Right, and can see for that use another one line again, <laughs> and something like this. Uh, Control D M. Something like this. I think that should work. I still come here and use another one line. And do it. So yes, unpressed. So the code should still be working. Minus, minus. Mm -hmm. So that was it. So one line as I think. But then to make our code cleaner, instead of this set state calls here, we can come and create a function. Uh, can come and create functions up here so that our widget tree is kind of shorter and easier to read. So we can come here and maybe create um, uh, something like uh, functions. Let me see. Um, at new to do, new to do equals to new to do equals to a new to do this one. Control X, new to do. Okay, like this, and then. Okay, something is wrong something in an initializer. Oh, I think it's always void. Oh, look, you know, this is a function itself, something like this. Something also have explicit parameters, okay? Something like this, yeah, that's it. Sorry, JavaScript's own syntax is a little still in my body. So you can have this, and in fact, when we come here, instead of still calling it this way, she's still working, yes, she's still working. You can still just come and pass the function itself. And that's all. Just still working. So this is better, new to do. I mean, call me, it calls this guy. I think if I remove void, it will still work. I mean, I have a scrollable item here and all the minuses are minusing. So let's do the same thing for uh, remove to do or delete to do. Uh, delete comes before D alphabetically. And so can do. Is it choose delete or remove? Let me delete. Or let me remove, remove since the, it's, the AP, it's more uh, related to it. So it's be set state. No, but re, delete needs to take the index int i. So I'm just copying the code. Uh, shift n, sorry, shift n, control x, move to do, but this time. Yes, it's going to give it the move to do I. Oh no, something is wrong. Because it's a it's a okay, let's just go like this. This time. Hmm, so something is a little wrong. I doubt it has meant to work. Exactly, something is wrong. It can't work that way because. Uh, the function that uh, we move to this mental call doesn't take any parameters. So if we give remove to do this i, when we come here, we need to return a function and not what set state returns. So we will need something like this, even if it's a one liner, we need to double one line the one liner. I know this is stupid, but uh, okay, that's the new work. Uh, no, no, it wasn't for that guy. 
So but now it's getting dirty. So for this one liner only, you can actually use the full function UI instead of using this, uh, something like this. Yeah. And then, uh, or oh, instead, even I'm getting it wrong. I think it's here. Because it's, it's something is wrong. That's why this guy is not his dream pure white. Right? It's not building. I think I'm supposed to do this here now instead. Yeah, the poly function. Yeah, now it's okay. Let me hope we start. Okay. This eye is in context. Remove to do. So there's an extra. Is an extra boost? No, it's okay. It has come back. So that was just different because here, the floating action button took the function itself, but because I'm calling another function with another, with another parameter, I'll have to do this, something like that. Let me, but I, let me explain better. Look at this set state, it's void. It takes no uh, parameter and it just calls set state directly. So we could pass it through, but this one still does a call set state and it takes a parameter. But then the function passed to on press callback doesn't take any parameter, so it doesn't need that. So that is it. And that's just it. So everything should still be working. We're still deleting the task and we're adding, deleting the task. So, so we are good to go. Uh, yes, we are good to go. <laughs> so we can commit this. Okay, no, before we even commit, let's also make this um, icon button clickable. Let's make this one uh, to like mark completed or mark uncompleted. So we need to convert this leading icon to an icon button. It just takes uh, writing an icon button, even an icon child, and then setting the unpressed uh, parameter. So as you see, coding is dynamic. You just need to just start from somewhere, uh, like the ones you've done. So you see, it's not clickable. It's not reacting, though it's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. It's now. Uh, it's not reacting like it's not clicking. So given this icon button now, radio button on checked our line on pressed. So when it's pressed, you want us to mark the to do in question as completed true. So if I come here and see on press set state, we need to call set state. Set state. To do I dot completed equals to. Oh, we, I think we need to toggle, right? We need to reverse it. So it's equals to the opposite. So that if you click and it was, no, oh, uh, and the UI is not changing. Okay, let's let's add another person. Here, we use the tenary operator again. Icon, if uh, to do I is completed, If it's completed, if to this I is completed, show icons dot uh, is alt, alt somebody task alt yeah, yes, task alt you can see the you can see the type. This is another why you just use this be proposing to you the various icons that are typing them. So we can go for this task calls. Yeah, I think I saw that when preparing the colon. Yeah, something like this. So if it's not completed, use the object to be around row. I can see now. Another thing we want to do is striking through the text. So the text decoration. So if you notice, we just did something on this clickable something. You can also add a text decoration here, style, text style. Uh, decoration, yeah, I think it's decoration. Yeah, I was correct that time. Text decoration dot line through. So, but then you want this decoration line to be only when it's completed, not at all times, right? So, you also can use a tenary operator here and see if to do this I dot uh, dot completed. So test decoration line through, else maybe null. Yeah, the decoration is an optional or something, so you can take null. So perfect, we've gotten there. 
We've gotten there, we've gotten it. You can strike through the lines, you can remove them, you can delete them, you can add more. So what's left is editing the text content of the to do. So Flutter is not difficult. And the best part is all these things are available entirely in web and in uh, iOS, it will all reflect like this. So before uh, doing anything, let's edit our code. I feel like we are editing, accessing to this eye too much. We've called to this eye too much. So uh, it's not a problem, though. Please mute your audio, Lillian, that just joined. To this eye, so you can leave it do, and then uh, this set state, you can move it out of here. You can create a function for it. So, so the, or you can even make the one liner. <laughs> Those online are cool, they, they just make the amount of code right to be and shorter. I can remember I told you guys at, at the end of today, the amount of code we want to write, the, the code, what I want to pass on me, like the set 100 and something. We are seeing 80, so we're getting close. Um, so we can come here to what's important. We thought we, we just uh, change status, right? Let's just change status, change to do status. Let me just say change status. Change status. Does it need to take an email and take the, 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 the to do that status was changed and then, sorry, skip. It will be, it was it. It will be something like this. And then come here, yeah, toggling it. And then coming here to, where was it? Yeah, it's unpressed here, right? So change status. That's it. I change status I. So I think we are good to go. We're good to go. So if all things being equal, so if we add more, we can delete one. Maybe two, something like that. So I think we are good to go. We can commit at this stage. The next thing is handling the user to be inputting the input to, to do themselves. So was doing it programmatically the way we, we had coded um, this deliver to this talk. So uh, yes, that was it. Let me minimize so that general overview of the code. General overview of the code. Yeah, that's it. So so far, we've introduced three functions that uh, um, that are callbacks to our icon buttons, I will make the icon button for the to do to show when it's active, when it's completed or not, and added its own callback function. We made the text to show line through decoration when line through uh, styling when uh, it's this thing. The decoration object, the textile object takes a lot of things. You can take font width, make it bold, take font, uh, take it, make it italics among other options. And then we we'll do the trailing icon button, uh, the minus button to work. So I mean, added it. I also added on the floating action button of the whole scaffolded page to add a new to do something like that. So you are getting close to what our UI has. The only thing left is the inputs, making these are change inputs of the text and um, changing the theme color of the page. And then I think we can call it a day. So but let's just commit. Uh, the changes were just this. The changes were adding this new function and yeah, changing these icons, icon buttons, adding line to decoration and stuff like that. It's always good to review changes before committing so that in case there's some things you're forgetting or something like that, or something that's not part of the commit that meant to be there. So I'm like, okay, make uh, to do buttons, make to do buttons and FAB if you have Turn off your mic. Functions of to do buttons and FAB and floating action. FAB stands for floating action button. So some implement functions of to do buttons and FAB. There, yeah, there's a good description of this commit and you can call control enter commit everything. Yeah. So back to business, we can go back to where we ended. Control plus. So the next thing you're supposed to do now is we set the input, right? The, the inputting code. So in Flutter, to input code, you used a text field. There are so many ways to input text from the user. That's why we use a text field. The text field is a very powerful 
object, you have so many options. In most cases, you may use a text field within a form control. Let me, let me show you from documentation. I don't think I'm just going to type it again. I think I can find text field directly from this sidebar. Text field, there's text field, text form field. Text field will serve our purpose. Text form field, in most cases, I use when you're reading a form, but we don't need the form. Interactive app, so you use that load. We just need text field and then. The text field takes so many callbacks and we'll use the ones we need along the line. Mm, this one's taking time to put in yes. Anyways, let's just go straight to coding it. So our aim now from now to the next commit is to make it uh, editable to text view so that we can stop at coding this delivery to the store and just initialize the to do with an empty content and stop me adding. So before I even continue, any questions so far with the functions we created with making the buttons clickable, using icon buttons of just an icon. We could even use normal button, use button online button with text, but for the scope of what we are supposed to achieve today. Any questions so far? Yeah, can you hear me? I'm hearing you. Um, my question is not big, really, Shabet. I wanted to know why is it in this? What is the meaning of that underscore in function declaration? Of that what? Underscore. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. Underscore in uh, properties means private. Once a new property or value static underscore, like given this uh, main dot that file now, there is the things that were declared is main was declared, class to do was declared, to do page was declared, to do page state was underscored, was prefix and underscore. So it will be private. It will be private to only main dot that. So outside this main dot that file, control zero, sorry. Outside the main dot that file, it won't be, you can't access it again. Yeah, so things that in the private keyword doesn't really exist in that. But it just automatically there with the underscore. So it just kind of con um, convention that these functions should be known within this uh, uh, to do page state class. It should be known outside it so you, it made it underscore. Okay, all right, I get it. Yes, yes, yes. It's just really convention because if you need to make it private, it probably not really happens. But I think it's just out of convention that we, we decide to stick to those rules. Yeah, okay. so that answered any other question. If known for now, then uh, if known for now, uh, we can continue with uh, implementing the input. So I was talking about text field. So our business is in this title part of the code, this text place, where uh, we show the text of it. We want it to be dynamic that you can edit text directly and you can be showing the text in question. So we can use a text field. If I change the text field, a lot of things will happen. We can use a text field. So let me comment out all these guys, first of all, and just use a text field and show what text field looks like. So this is what a text field looks like in the simplest of its ways. You can input the text. So and you can come here, GDSC. Nothing's happening with all these texts. If we load, everything goes. But now the first thing is that this line under here, I don't think I'm really comfortable with it because I want the user to feel like, okay, it's automatic. You see the UI they were given. It's blinking, but it's there's no line on that. So we can come here and uh, do. Sorry. We can come here and do. So before I continue, text fields I will call an input decoration. Is it input decoration or decoration? The decoration that takes an input decoration property. So by default, there's an input decoration there for you already. That's why you have that line blinking on that. But if you set it to null, set no input decoration in the thing, all the underscores, all the underlines go. That's the first thing you wanted to do. The second thing, I think I like the styling we had before, so I can comment it out. Yes, so we had the font style of 22. And if I strike through, the strike through maintained. It's why Flutter is cool, right? So I think another thing we need to do, to do now, before we go into the content, we want to, when we submit the to do, submit the text, it enters, it gets saved. Because if I click now, I've submitted it, but it's not saved to the to-do. Um, it's not saved, yes. So it, there's no, we're not specifying the one way. And there's an unsubmitted 
and submitted callback. I mean, amongst many other callbacks. So we have to set states too, because we're changing the value of that to do. Why this thing is important, you said, is because if you don't do it, if I add a new one now, okay. Uh, if I add a new to do, or I can no longer display to do content. Okay, no problem. Before, okay, before even doing it, unsubmitted, let me do something. So to make new to do's to be showing the content of the previous to do, I may have to come here and do controller. So text fields or text form fields shall you have controllers. A text editing controller gives you more control. Let me check what the documentation has to say about controllers. Yeah, of the controller. Text editing controller. Text editing controller. So text editing controller. A controller for an editable text field. Whenever the user modifies the text field and associates the text editing controller, the text field updates value and the controller notifies its listeners. So we are using controller because uh, somewhere at the bottom they said um, a text editing controller can also be used to provide an initial value for a text field. So one scenario that anytime the build method is called and these text fields are populated, the initial value of the text field can be served, can be given to the text field from what the to-do had, from what the to-do in the to-dos are we had. So we want to give it uh, that initial content value and we can do it with help of the text editing controller. So, but we don't really need much of the text editing controller because text editing controller is really dynamic. You can do a lot of things with it, changing stuff. You can see how big it is, adding a listener and disposing. We don't need much of that. You can just go straight to providing it uh, directly uh, instead of doing it. And just go straight to providing it directly. I'm coming here and saying, okay, boom, delete, delete, controller, text editing controller, just like that. So you don't even need to be importing things. Everything has been imported already inside that, uh, inside this uh, begin control home, package flutter, flutter material. Uh, I hope was myself, which is it. Text editing controller, text editing controller. Uh, we can serve it this text content. I think it takes, it takes a text parameter like this and that's all. So that serves. You see, deliver to this store. You see, everybody just to deliver this store. But if I come here now and edit the to this, and it just Sorry, what have I done? We might have to restart though. I've lost connection. Control. Out the box console. Okay, bye bye. Too much for consumer thread. Sorry about that. Okay. Stop. Good. Let's start afresh. Um, I don't know. Maybe we've done a lot of changes in runtime. That's why they, they, they have collapsed. Uh, or well, was it because there's so many text editing controllers? I don't know. So yeah, why would you put text editing controller? Uh, why it's for the app to be started? No, no, not from Chrome, please, not from Chrome. Uh, maybe. Yes, so is that start something? It won't take much time. At least it's not the first row. It's just the first view that takes much time, but it won't take much time. Yeah, running good at the tax default. Uh, so yeah, you were you were here tied to text field. You said the question now, so that we don't have any under any underline. We give the controller so that we can serve the beginning. So remember, it's a stateful widget. Anytime we call set state from anywhere in the app, the build method will be called and re-updated, and the app will be repopulated. So the flutter has a way it does it. So when that occurs, it will go within and change everything that has been changed and update the um, values. So we want the uh, input, the text field inputs when they're initialized to have the original values that, to have the original values that the, that the to-do objects in the to-dos array had. So when that happens now, it will pull, that's why we're using the controller to pull this value. But then if we, if we, if the user changes the value of this text field, we want it to be submitted back to the uh, user in one way or the other. Let this thing come up. <laughs> yeah, that's I want to do something about this and one or the other. So if I come here and do something like uh, GDSC and I mark this and I add a new one, you see, GDSC was not saved. Let me do it again. You see, uh, it's 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 
I mean, they come here and we did this one. And then, you see, something is wrong. The it, it, it is not being saved to uh, the uh, to do objects in a to do array. So I need to save it on the unsubmitted button and call set state two. That's why we're using a stateful widget. If I added no one, it's gone. If I mark this thing as selected and see command edit the value into edit, but if I do something like this and add a new one, it's not remembering that value because it is not called, but it's remembering the fact that it was completed because set state is being called when it's been completed. So we also need to call set state on, on unsubmitted callback. So instead of doing what we were doing before, we can come here and call and create the callback itself, new to do, uh, new remove, use last person, so maybe update content. Int I, no, no, string, string, text. Okay, now we should now call set state. And set state will, or will you, set state takes a function, it doesn't take this thing. Okay, sorry, string text and int I, the index of it, we need it to. I'm gonna come here and say, okay, to do I dot content is equal to text, period. So that's it. We have uh, an update content function that takes the text and the index in the to do's and we use it to call set state. And when we come inside unsubmitted, unsubmitted takes a function just like the other callbacks. So we can just come and say unsubmitted like this. No. On something like this, yes, and then you can call uh, uh, update content. Yes, on something like this, it text. Yeah, it takes a text that was submitted. It takes a text that was submitted from the text field, and then update content from the text. So VS Code auto auto formats on C, so that's why it's um, rearranging it. So all this being equal, maybe if I come here now and On submit, if I click this thing, submit it. It's there. So if I mark this one as, if I mark this as, you see, set state is still called and nothing wrong went, went on. I can delete this one and the, the text already maintained its value. So talking about it, we can now even delete, uh, we can now delete a uh, moon MF, for example, moon MF and on submit, that's added system, add a new one, and open the MST there. If I mark or I mark correct and the text, so our to do is almost done. Our to do tasks is to do tasks apps almost done. So Flutter is really cool, right? Uh, aside this updating content, another thing is a problem. Hmm, we add a new task, it's coming with this delivered to this stock, and we don't want that. So we can take back this to empty or string. And to focus the text field on page term. So where's that text field? We can add auto focus to that's good. So anytime a new tax will be created, you see Flutter just automatically focusing with empty, and you can type uh, delivering to the store. And then we can enter that one, go home and eat after this, you can enter that one. Thanks for attending. So I think it's getting complete now. Uh, our, our, our Flutter to do apps getting complete. So we can mark as red, we can delete, delete everybody. And if everybody shows back the empty. So because this empty something is added with, because it's working, we'll create a new one. If the focus is and says, one page done, one page done. Something like that, and life goes on. And when we're marked done, we can even delete, we can even create a second empty on top, delete the empty ones, delete, delete. So our, our stuff is almost done, but there's one more thing that I'm not okay with. People like me that like to be very detailed in English or in, uh, in explaining, let me see, deliver today's talk, this talk while asking questions and committing. You see, the input is wrapping, Questions and completing and answering. For example, the input is not wrapping, it is uh, shifting it, uh, scrolling left, scrolling horizontally. So I need a way to permit it to go multi lines or to 
wrap next many lines available. So the uh, um, attribute for that in text fields is a uh, multi-line. So in this case, I can come here and say, okay, maybe multi-line. Is it max line? Sorry, max lines. No, because it takes minimum lines, max lines. I think max lines. No, it has been set for you. But when you say max lines, no, now okay, I didn't mean to save that one. So deliver. No. Delivering, sorry, delivering to this store and going home. But there's a disadvantage. Now, okay, let me I'll comment out this max line snow. Wait, let me just cut the keyboard. If I create a new, uh, Notice how the keyboard, uh, the keyboard uh, uh, icon is the keyboard check mark icon. It's a the keyboard check mark icon. It's kind of an an enter key or like a save key, a submit key. It doesn't have the enter button like we are used to. It's like a save key, right? The reason why when I type anything and I press enter, so I'm not pressing enter, I click here, it saves it. And then, but now when I do max lines now. And I come here now. The keyboard changed to enter, so I can enter and be pressing enter key and entering. So why it's good? There's no more now way for the user to submit. So we need to sacrifice the multi-line something in exchange for submitting keyboard. So we can use uh, what is keyboard type and use keyboard. Yeah, it's not keyboard type. Uh, inputs keyboard. Okay, it should be text keyboard. Mm. Okay, maybe keyboard appearance. I'm getting something wrong. Keyboard appearance is supposed to be there now. Yeah? Yeah, I think I saw keyboard appear at some point. Uh, or maybe it's from here. Okay, we don't just refer back to that guy. Keyboard appearance, uh, mass lines, text input. Okay, text input action, not even keyboard. Text input action. Uh, text input action dot done. So you see many of them dot continue dot done dot emergency score dot go. So these things are just you know saved already. Everything you need is already there for you. And yeah. Call it that type. Hmm. you call it input type. I repeat yourself, please, Bill. You call it what in Android? In this type, in this type. Oh, thank you very much. So okay. that's it. We can now have our multi line keyboard. Sorry. See, uh, focus here now. Uh, delivering to the store while asking questions to wrap across many lines and taking corrections. I can mark this. I can still come here and uh, we've corrected that problem. So um, our to-do to -do, uh, array can now start an empty array. When will you come? The user just, uh, sorry for the keyboard, the user comes and and that's this new to do. Go home today and marks done and come back now. Marks done, stuff like that. And you can make any of them to, to uh, uh, span multi line. Uh, what happened? What happened to the clipboard? Sorry. It's like these things don't really work that nice too. What's it? 
Uh, where's the pissed uh, this guy? Vaki, thank you. So something like this. Sorry, pissed. See. Yeah, something like that. So uh, I think we are good to go. We're watching the milestone. Our input is now working. Our text field is working. It took adding text field and keep on doing try and error in so many uh, in so many order in so many uh, attributes or uh, inputs about the text field and gets me dry. I don't know. I just have a thing about order. Maybe like it being orderly in terms of the. I forget to call the ADC, MOST, something like that. So yeah, uh, I don't think that matters to you. It doesn't really matter, it just matters to me. So that was it about how to do app. We are almost close to the end. The, not, the last thing to do now is changing the thing. I, I really didn't worry about using these black colors that are in the UI. I feel like I prefer the gray. Is forgive me whoever designed the UI. That's myself actually, <laughs> don't mind me. So um, mm, I think that's all, that's all. So we can commit these changes. If we look at the changes we have, we undid the default string content. We made it empty, added an update content callback function, used it in the text field. And so, so committing atomically like this when you make changes helps in tracking changes in the code. When someone is in your code in the future, when you're trying to debug or stuff like that, you know where to start from, you know which commit introduce what and something like that. And it helps you to build incrementally, right? So the change we did here was um, change we had here was what's in the description sir. Uh, uh, what can we say? Okay, make input text editable. Yeah. Oh, I don't think that's the right English to use, but then I was correct. Then coming back here again, uh, the last thing to do is changing theme. All along, we've been on one widget, which I don't think sometimes even encourage. You don't need to paste it because it's small. Sometimes, when your app grows, we want to modularize your widgets to other widgets files and saving them and uh, importing them the way we put them the constants. So, what time I asked about the uh, the the uh, uh, contact constants file saving constants. It's not going to be useful. Yet. We are going to use it now. Yes. We're going to use so, so from the comment. Someone said delivering empty to do should not be allowed. I think it should be though, because from my own experience, sometimes I've ever done that before. Or uh, people want us to block the empty to do. I think it should be me, me using Google Tasks because this thing was inspired from Google Task app. Where if you use Google Tasks, something like that, you can actually uh, delete, uh, generally allow a lot of empty to do's and come back and edit them. Even if you can remove them, as for the scope of this call, I think we've quite last time, we are close to more than two hours now. So uh, let's just change the theme and then come to the, yeah. That can be, I can be school for another class or can meet me up privately and I tell you how to do that one. So for the one of uh, changing the theme. So the theme we can change is just in this brightness. If you go to brightness dot dark, and just change brightness, brightness dot dark, everything changes. But there's some things are wrong. Things are wrong, like the background color of the uh, of the app bar shouldn't be, and maybe the uh, the dark mode should be light mode, and not dark mode, because the icon should not be seeing light mode. It's not dark mode. That okay. If you click on me now, switch to dark mode, and then the color. I think um, the logo preferably a white logo than the colored logo, something like this. Yes, so this will be our dark themed app. And then everything is there. So theming is taking care of you automatically. So uh, to achieve this, we just need to implement the changes you are changing. So maybe we need a Boolean value. Bool, do you use Bool for Bool? Bool is dark theme or is light theme. Let me say it's light equals to true. We start with light theme. Sorry, I like light themes. Uh, do I? I think I prefer dark themes. But anyone? In most cases, dark teams only come first. There's even an option of me starting with pretty system wide dark teams. But uh, for the scope of now, for the scope of now, uh, um, let's just go with just changing manually, not from operating system. Yeah. 
then bool is light is true. So if it's light, if you are in lighting, change use brightness dot light. Else use brightness dot dark. Oh, did I get something wrong? Okay, sorry. Hold on. So uh, one more thing. Uh, background color. If you are in lighting, use colors with white, else no, because it's an optional parameter. Uh -huh. The key color already, image asset is light team, else key logo color. Oh, no, no, it's the other way around. It's color for light and then white for dark. Same thing comes here. If you're in lighting, a light mode, uh, no, no, no. If you're in lighting, be showing switch to dark mode. Else, show switch to light mode. No, 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 this one. Yes, we got it right. So the last person to do now is to switch this button, make this button to switch. So it was icon button as unpressed already, but then it's not um, it's not working. Or, so we need to set state here. So you can set state directly or maybe create a function to change team. So change status, change team, uh, CSCT, change team. It's as simple as, uh, change team will be a function that simply calls set state. And does and makes its light equals to it's not light, period. That reverses the value of its light in one time. Do I have an extra boost? Is it correct now? I think it's correct. And then, uh, this guy will simply call this light. Mm, change to. So if all things being equal, they will have it. They will have it. They will have it. They will have it. I think we are done. And there's another thing left. At least for a basic introduction to using plotter, you can do anything. It's. I mean, let me refresh. So another thing is that I may build this app at this state. Building is not a problem. Just float up build command. It gives you an APQ and AMP on board and give you a website you can host. Uh, build simple to do. But then there's advantage with this thing now. The moment you open this app and close it, everything is gone. The to-dos are gone. So, but if you want to now save it, many things like save it to storage, like Firebase, Firestore, or uh, adding notifications, make sure you want accessing your to-do. I didn't sign in, things like that, I don't know. But that's beyond the scope of now. We're just on an intro and that's uh, We can switch teams, delete this one, undo this one, switch teams back, something like that. So that's it. I think we've officially come to the end of this uh, introduction, at least what we prepared for today. We created five functions and we ended up having, okay, we didn't finish 190. I end up having 90 lines of code. Oh, uh, right. That's lovely, in my opinion. Uh, let me commit it first. And I'll add it to GitHub. So, uh, pumping, pump your questions now. I think I'm going to do this app and send it to the uh, GDSC if I was up. So, people will try to install and try them on your own. We didn't change the logo. We could change the logo of the app because if you launch the, if you open the app in the app launcher, sorry. If you open this app, the logo, the logo should be Flutter's logo or something like that. Okay, it's Android's logo, anyone. It shouldn't be Flutter's one, but it's not, it's so, uh, if you, if you could change logo and use our DSC logo instead, but no, for uh, Lego issues, in as much as we use the logo here, I don't think we are free to use Google developers as much as that. We are supposed to use Google developers and clubs logo, which is separate with the right top of, of under or by the side. So, um, any questions? Any questions? Uh, 
Album, please, what is the name of the app? Just need it to do now. That was the first thing. To do, to do the things you want to do, like listen to the things you want to do. When you do them, you click on this side here to say you've completed it, or you can delete them by this minus icon, and you can add more here and be saving them, something like this. We just made it up in front of you. It came, there was a UI that was set previously, so we tried to emulate the app previously, and that's what we built in this uh, class. So this is simple like, to I mean the app you are using to code. Okay, no, this is your normal Visual Studio code. You can see the icon here. Uh, you can see the icon in my app bar, this blue one here. And then this is uh, okay. an Android emulator, like a, something that can help show you an Android phone, the way an Android phone is in a laptop so that you can be testing changes in Flutter or Android code as you're changing. If this system was a, if this system was a, an iOS, a Mac system, then we could also run, launch an iOS emulator. And to answer Liu's question earlier on, when you now do Flutter emulators or Flutter devices, the iOS emulator will also be available if you had created one and you're on a Mac device. So hope that answers your question, Liam. Yes. Thank okay. you. Any other question? I think I've committed, right? So I think we can do... Mm. Go ahead, if you have a question. Please now, you know, I actually entered this, so can oh. you just like in a brief summarize? Because I actually missed a lot from the beginning. So if okay, you can just, like, yes, that's that, okay. The brief, no problem. The brief summary Sorry. is that Flutter is something we can use. This thing is building, so after building, I can tell you APK. Flutter is something we can use okay. to build. Um, Flutter is a tool. You no, know, you recorded it, so maybe my last. Record, yeah, she can watch yeah, exactly. The record will be available. This thing's been recorded. I think that works. That works. But even still, Leo, we deserve a summary in the record that uh, Flutter is an easy tool to build. Uh, mobile, mobile. Please mute your mic. Mute your mic, please. Flutter is an easy tool to build uh, mobile device, mobile apps or web applications because this thing can run on the website. If I launch it on Chrome instead, Chrome Web, and I quit that run. And I launched on Chrome. This is gonna work the same way, but then it won't be uh, responsive. Like we can add responsiveness, we can make it reduce the width of this list style. So we can bound the list style. We can come here, and uh, I don't think it really takes a bit max width. I don't think it does that. I have to wrap it around a container, or wrap this list style around the container. Um, max width. Yeah. That's even doable talking about that. Uh, but no, yes, I think we can wrap around a container and then around a center and center align it, something of that nature. Uh, but no, that's a little bit too much. Let's not let's just put on why we came here. So Lilian, your question is I like as your answer us because we've spent a lot of time in this record in this uh, class, but there'll be record available after I can take them and watch it. But for a summary, just on the floor, that's something you can use to build web apps, mobile apps, stuff like that. And you just want programming language and just 90 lines of code or something. We came up with this to-do app that can switch, that can switch themes, add new to-dos, save them, delete them. So this is the same exact app running in Chrome. If I add new ones, it will be very wide, wide screen. So maybe I should just release it into. too. And then see, I can add another one. Okay, something is wrong. Whatever thing it is, and I can switch teams. So uh, everything has an advantage of its advantage. We need a submit button or somewhere for it working web because that keyboard type action now it's not saving it in web, but that's beyond the scope of this place. We've tried. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Liu, uh, any other question? Lilian, all the answers. Any other question? Liu, any other question? Something that nature? Uh, not really. Actually, just if they can I something. Well, about um, maybe you might look at how you um, talk about saving states or something like that. So that saving states. 
Okay, the app is done building. Yeah. I don't understand. The app yeah, is... So I'm going to send it to the group later. So you said something about saving states. Yeah, because what right. affected that so that it to be becoming empty when to either exit the app and come back or when it's in where I mean that maybe it's not saving state. No, okay, so maybe... okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, like in in, uh, in Android now, that kind of thing happens, but you can do something like this state so that you can get back that that data. You understand? Maybe through a local storage. Okay, like really local data, storage. Like. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's doable, but let's leave it for now. It's We've done too much for three hours. Like, let's leave it for now. Maybe in another iteration, we can now add that one. It's doable. Like, adding the to do's. Um, in that means we have to edit all our state, set state functions. Now, all these to do's, either computer or something like that, will not be actually just editing an array. We'll be editing the value of the array in the local storage or wherever. So, in that storage. Or I, I, I don't even prefer the storage because. Uh, if it's web, for example, or look, well, I don't even prefer it. I prefer we are de doing directly in Firestore so that we get to leverage Firebase and CV indirectly. In, you understand? So that's why I feel like let's just leave it for now. Okay. Yeah, it, no, it's not all the best. Like, if someone just opens the app, as it to be, you close it, everything is gone. So it's not really fun. But the aim of this to do was not actually create a to do. The aim was to teach Flutter, like, just make it, make it Flutter feel easy. So in three hours, we have done all of these. Maybe we have to do it, and we taught it actually. Maybe we do all of this in web and teach from scratch. We'll not finish HTML or CSS for now. Or it was Android native. Like there'll be so much, right? So the front is what it is. That's what it is. So, yeah. Thank so you. Any, any, any other, wait, let me push this thing to Flutter. Sorry, description optional. Flutter, to do Flutter. So this is the GSA for now. It's, hey, it's private. It shouldn't be private. Okay, settings. But I think this works. Uh, I think I should. Why you do that? Let me. Yeah, I think I should. I stop sharing my screen. Let me see the manager. Let me stop the recording. Yeah, you can do. Maybe if I do, I could even stop my recording because I think we are done. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Wait, let me be sure this thing pushed. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes.